Yamaoka from Hitachi here. So I'm going to talk about outline and present status of CMOS annealing. So CMOS annealing is what we're developing. Going forward, annealing and the quantum computing, how can we contribute to the development of this field uh, is what I'd like to talk about. So we make CMOS annealing. So we are regarded as a hardware computing technology company, but uh, we're focused on delivering value to the customer, not just making these products. And so you see my department, uh, I'm within the uh, R&D group, and there's this edge computing research department within it, or rather, and at the same time, uh, simultaneously, uh, I belong to the Quantum Application Promotion Office. So I'm really engaged uh, in developing applications. So this is the outline of my talk. Why are we doing this? I'd like to explain that background first. And then I explain what is CMOS annealing, very simply. And then after that, I talk about the use cases of CMOS annealing, uh, some concrete examples. And finally, I talk about the future of annealing machines. So first, the background, the motivations. So IT has a lot of potential. There's a lot of expectations. And at the UN, there is the SDGs. And the Japanese government is uh, promoting Society 5.0. So trying to create new value, we think, is quite important. And at Hitachi, we want to create new value by IT, and we call it social innovation. Based on that, uh, we are promoting our business. So how do we uh, bring about social innovation is something we have to think about. And in this uh, uh, world, there are so many sensors around us and they, you can collect a lot of data uh, from them, how to use it uh, most appropriately to create a convenient and comfortable life, or how, how will that contribute to the development of industry and economy? That's what we think we have to really think about. If that uh, is realized, then we can come closer to social innovation, we think. So we are developing various technologies. One of them is optimization we think that is quite important as others have said so as written here optimization is being used in various fields of course in logistics and in medicine in making management decisions in a wide range of fields optimization uh, is quite important so accelerating optimization I think uh, is going to be key uh, to realizing social innovation so from there uh, we have uh, focused on CMOS annealing. So first, uh, we made a chip, like so, and we announced it. But uh, what is CMOS annealing? Well, others have been uh, talking about the optimization uh, problem, and uh, you put that in the easing model, and you find uh, the uh, lowest energy state that is the uh, optimization so we have simulated annealing so we are inspired by the quantum annealing and in terms of hardware algorithm we want to use the parallelism of that and so want to find the low energy state as quickly as possible that is the essence of CMOS annealing and so initially we built this kind of uh, chip first chip so in the semiconductor industry, uses a very old technology, 65 nano process. So that's what we initially announced. And then we're talking about social innovation. So IoT is important, and so we need a computation to occur at the edge. So this is like a business card size, a CMOS annealing device. So at the uh, edge, computation can take place with this. Furthermore, what we're working on recently 
is not just focus on the edge, but uh, let's focus on making it bigger. Optimization problem. Uh, if it's uh, small, it could be solved by previous technologies. So we have to be able to grapple with uh, larger problems. And uh, so we uh, connect parallelly the CMOS boards, uh, and you try to uh, solve bigger problems. It says 2.25 megabits. So solving well, we have this prototype to uh, solve uh, the combinatorial optimization problem. So up to this point, we use a dedicated hardware. So using model uh, spin and uh, uh, spin are sparsely connected. But not just that. For some uh, problem, you cannot uh, solve with just uh, uh, sparse connection. And so momentum annealing where you have a full connected easing model. And so we created an algorithm to uh, solve that optimization problem. So you see A and B in this diagram. So a full connected easing model that's made into a bipartite graph. So even if it's a full uh, connection, you can have parallel uh, calculation. And you want to find the low energy state as quickly as possible. So this kind of algorithm is what we developed. And so we have two CMOS annealing. So as I said, one uh, is uh, dealing with the full connection. That's uh, the momentum annealing uh, algorithm that's implemented on the GPU, uh, solves fully connected uh, connection problems. So in terms of problem scaling or uh, optimization of financial portfolio, the problems themselves, they're f uh, fully connected problems. So this requires this kind of algorithm. On the other hand, uh, larger scale problems uh, will also emerge for that. Uh, if it's, well, you can solve it if it's a sparse connection. So we have ASIC and FPGA dedicated semiconductor implemented on those dedicated a semiconductor, and uh, we can solve a uh, problem bigger than two, uh, two megabits. But the type of problems that can be solved are limited. So rather than uh, virtual issues, uh, more uh, problems close to the physical world are more suitable, like reduction of traffic congestion or uh, image processing. Those are the areas where the simulated annealing can be used. So. Uh, we can create uh, uh, value by applying the technology to appropriate uh, problems. So that, that was the overview of CMOS annealing. As uh, Izumi-san of Toshiba was saying as well, uh, in making new computers, we need to establish use cases. So what we're really struggling with, and Izumi-san also talked about this, so this kind of uh, combinatorial optimization problem uh, we say it, it, it works for that, and uh, uh, we can show that it can solve some problems. But if it's just solving problems, uh, example problems, it doesn't lead uh, to the uh, value of customers. So we've done many POCs, but the very few example of uh, actual implementation at the customer level, that's because customers, they have this, these kinds of uh, some uh, case studies, and we, we show that it can be solved, and they say, oh, that's nice. It doesn't really go to commercial deployment. So we have to really understand the issues uh, that the customers are grappling with, and we have to create real value uh, for them, is what we think. And uh, so very similar to what Izumi-san said, but uh, there, there are social issues, and we have to define the requirements based on that. And then uh, you can convert that to Kubo or Ising model. And then it has to be made into application, and then that has to be solved. So we have to follow those steps. And therefore, well, we are doing R&D, but it's not just confined to R&D. We really have to... Uh, use the system engineers who are embedded in the customers, have to ask them what are the problems the clients are struggling with. So we first define the requirement, and then we can actually come up with use cases uh, that are commercially viable. And so 
actual use cases that are actually being uh, implemented, we would like to show you. Uh, one is shift optimization. So how many people at the particular uh, times of uh, days? Uh, so we can use this for that kind of optimization of shifts. How many people at a particular hour? If it's just that calculation, you don't need a annealing machine. You just uh, use conventional computer. It can be solved uh, in a second. But uh, when you ask the people who actually make the shifts, there are so many constraints that they have to consider. Several are listed here. Uh, for example, you want to maximize profits, so you want the least number of people. Uh, that's quite understandable. But uh, also, if it's a call center, well, from the caller's pr perspective, they don't want to wait uh, for the operator to answer. And uh, amongst the operators, there are people with different level of skills. So you want to allocate uh, the skills appropriately to the various shifts. And also, from uh, the operator perspective, they have various wishes too. They want to take uh, a day off here, or they want to work in the morning or in the afternoon, or they have to go pick up uh, their child so they can't work in the late afternoon. And also from legal perspective, uh, you can't have an operator working uh, for uh, a certain number of uh, days consecutively, and uh, uh, you can't uh, work uh, early shift after late shift. And uh, uh, if you have all those constraints, it's difficult to solve with the uh, conventional system. And so we think we can provide uh, a value with annealing machines uh, to deal with all these constraints. And uh, so the so that was the SMBC call center where we did the experiment, the previous slides. But we actually used it for our own uh, workers. So under COVID, uh, we, we had to uh, avoid uh, high density of people. So at our research uh, center, uh, we had to uh, discourage people uh, from coming. But the researchers actually, they want to come uh, to the office or the lab to do experiments. So we wanted to find uh, the uh, sweet spot. Uh, and uh, so we uh, did this experiment on ourselves to see if we could come up with the optimal shift. So the uh, explanation is gone. But uh, what person is in which room at what hour? That's uh, shown in red at the top and below. We show whether this uh, meets uh, the, the the wishes of each person. And uh, at the bottom, we see if there aren't too many people in a particular room. So by actually using this, uh, we, we were able to uh, brush this solution up to one that we actually want to use ourselves. So October 2020, a little uh, old news now, but uh, uh, we, off we announced uh, the not seamless annealing uh, but the solutions based on seamless annealing. Another 